everyone and welcome to another video log. This one is going to be about mission number 16. It's a mission created by Foxtrot Charlie with some additional inspiration by Fishcake. So thank you very much for making the mission and actually congratulations to everyone who managed to solve it as this mission was by no means easy. And to make matters worse or actually more entertaining for us, a couple of people actually made it even harder for themselves which especially that they succeeded in what they wanted to do is quite amazing and quite educational for well at least me and probably some other people so well done and let's start by looking at the mission itself operation codename pasocon during the operation game our spy codename martin managed to intercept hostile communication and there's a link to a file that contains the communication Unfortunately, we have no idea how to decode it. To make matters worse, our most well-versed in crypto agent codenamed Scotty is on a mission right now and cannot help us. Your handler advised us to use your skill. The fate of Unar rests in your hands. And remember, if something is not clear, you have a license to brute force. Good luck, over and out. So that was the text of the mission, and I'm basically going to use Foxtrot's blog post to guide you through what was this mission about. So we basically start with the file, which you need to download. After downloading the file, it turns out that it's base64, but that's really, that's not really the challenge, right? You just use, for example, base64 command to decode it, and then you get a WAV file. Now, the WAV file does sound like this. Of course, this doesn't seem like a WAV file which you have to understand yourself. It's something that seems to be for computers or some other hardware. So it's always good to put it in Audacity or any other application like that, which Foxtrot actually did, to take a look what are the frequencies, if there is any special characteristic about the file that could give you an idea what is it. In this case, you basically had to guess a little or have some knowledge about radio signals. So this was slow scan TV. Now, what's slow scan TV? As you can read on Wikipedia, it's actually a method of encoding visual image, like a static image, into voice basically and then transmit it over the wire, but well, over the ether in this case. So it's basically a way to encode an image, a low resolution color or monochrome image. To decode the image, Foxtrot used RxSSTV, which is basically the same tool I would use. I also tried with MixW, which is another application for it. And what you get is basically a short piece of text, which goes like this, report one. Then we have a 5x5 five five letter matrix, and after that we have some, probably an encoded message. Y, D, H, X, D, M, W, B, Q, L, F, K, D, Y, N, V. Over and out. And that's all we have. The next step is basically to figure out what is this cipher and how to decode it. As you can see, part of the matrix is basically covered, so you do need to, I guess, figure out what is in the rest of the matrix if that is needed at all. You need to figure out what kind of cipher this is, or I guess guess it. Well, that shouldn't be too hard, there aren't that many 5x5 matrix using ciphers out there, probably a couple of classic ones, including Playfair, which is the most obvious choice. Playfair uses the matrix as a key and basically encodes and decodes the message using pairs of letters. But we don't have the full matrix, we have only part of it. I figured that you could actually decode part of a message, even having the matrix which is missing 8 letters, so so let's try to do it. The first pair of letters would be Y and D, so you need to look them up inside the matrix and they are here, D is here, Y is here, so they basically form a row or a column. Playfair has a couple of rules which you use when encoding and decoding, and in this case where both letters form a column or a row, you basically take the next letter or the previous letter in the row and that's your decoded or encoded letter. So in this case, when decoding, you basically go left. We have Y as the first letter, therefore going left we have I as the first decoded letter. So let's note it down. Then D is on the edge, so you basically just wrap around and go and grab A as your second decoded letter. So we have I and A. Then we have two next letters to decode, which is H and X. Unfortunately, there is no H in the matrix, which means it's under one of the question marks. So we don't know where is it. I'm just going to mark both these places as 
access to know that there should be two letters here, but we cannot decode them yet. D and M are our next letters, so we basically look them up in the matrix and they again are in the same row, so we use the same rule. And we get two next letters, A for D and Y for M. And then we have W and B in the next pair, which we actually can partially decode, I think. In this case, they don't form a row or a column, they form a rectangle. And in case of a rectangle, the rule is that you take the opposite letter in the row where your letter is. So basically for B that would be P, but for W there's a question mark so we actually have no idea. So I'm going to cross out the place where the W is because we don't know how to decode it, but in case of B we actually know that the decoded letter is P. Going forward we have Q and L. Both Q and L are actually missing from the matrix so we cannot use them, so I'm just going to mark X's in their places. And then we have F and K. Neither, okay, K is actually there, but F is not, therefore, well, we cannot decode it either. So unfortunately, I do have to X them out. Then we have D and Y, which are again in the same row, which we used a couple of times before. So instead of D, I'm going to write A, and instead of Y, I'm going to write E. Then we have N, and V. N and V do actually form a rectangle again, and we are we have actually a fully populated rectangle, so we can add both letters, decode them. Instead of N, it's going to be R, and instead of V is going to be X. So we have part of a message, which is I, A, X, X, A, Y, X, P, X, 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 A, I, R, X, which doesn't actually tell us too much. But being said, there aren't that many six letter words in English which have A at the beginning and then A and Y in the middle, so we can basically grab them out. So to do this, I'm going to use the grab command line tool and uh, English word dictionary. And we actually get only four words, which is allies, which I have absolutely no idea what that is, always, arrays, and assize. So it's probably going to be always. So I guess we get already part of this message, which is I always, when we have P something, and something which kinda sounds like fur X. Turns out we would have to probably brute force all the other letters and then cross check them against the English dictionary. In the original solution by Foxtrot Charlie, what he did was actually brute forcing everything and then just grabbing, doing a cross test with an English dictionary of what comes out and what seems kinda English, I guess. And the password would be I always play fur with X at the end. So that was the mission created by Foxtrot Charlie, and let's look at the solutions which were posted online by my viewers. First of all, let's look at Paweł Łukasik's solution. He has a pretty nice blog post about the way he did it. He did use Audacity as the same way as Foxtrot Charlie, he did use RxSSTV to actually decode it, though had I guess some more problems with with it. So here's a quick tip for decoding SSTV. The way you could do it is basically having your speakers turned on and a microphone which catches whatever the speakers emit, though that kinda results in what we see on this picture. What you want to do is you want to actually create a virtual sound card, for, for example for Windows or something called the virtual cable, and use that to transmit sound and catch it on the other end. That way you get a nice and clean looking picture. So looking at Pavel's playfair solution, he actually tried to figure out the placement of the matrix and kinda rebuild it, and in the end he actually was successful and did get the password. Moving forward, we have a solution by Nightfox. So what Nightfox did is he basically tried to use stack height at the beginning to extract any hidden message in the wave file. However, that was not it. In the end, he did figure out with the help of VI Fam 5 that it's actually SSTV, and he did get the proper image. And after that, he did reach the conclusion that this is actually play for Cypher. In the end, he did try to figure out what's the matrix and rebuild it, and well, thanks to some educated guessing, he did arrive at the correct solution. So well done and congratulations, and thank you for posting the write up. So one way to solve the mission was actually to know or guess or learn that this is SSTV. That being said, Adrian Lasko 
Koski didn't know it. He didn't know SSTV. So what he did is he actually analyzed the wave itself and then figured out that, hey, there's some frequency stuff going on here. And after analyzing it a little more and looking at the patterns probably quite a lot, he did arrive at an image. The image is somewhat fuzzy, but well, not knowing the protocol arriving even at this fuzzy image is quite amazing, so well done, you have my full respect, and I truly love your write-up, so thank you for posting it. Even though Adrian didn't reach the final solution, the write-up itself is like quite educational on what to do if you are not sure what the protocol is, but have some time on your hand to actually try and analyze it, so well done, and thank you for posting the write-up. Now, what Adrian didn't succeed in fully, Marble82 did. Marble also had no idea about this is SSTV and also went the long way around analyzing the protocol itself. So after looking at the wave patterns, after looking at the spectrograms quite a lot probably, and after looking at more patterns formed by the waves, he did find out that, hey, it's actually an encoded image. And the encoded image seems to form a text, and the text is actually readable. Surprisingly, the text which he arrived at is actually more readable than SSTV decoded one, so well done on that and congratulations. So he actually moved onward and attempted to solve the playfer cipher, which he did by brute forcing the alphabet, the missing letters from the matrix, and finally arrived at the correct password, which was I always play for X. So congratulations, well done, and thank you for posting the amazing ride. The last solution, or actually the first solution, was by by Gerlamo Cardano. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. He was the first person to actually spot the solution. Well done, congratulations. So that was mission 16 for you by Foxtro Charlie with additional input from Fishcake. Thank you for the great mission. I actually had fun reading the write-ups, especially the ones where people did not realize it's SSTV and decide to decode the protocol. So well done on that front. And the next mission was already published, so go ahead and try it. It's way easier than this one, so you should have quite a lot of fun with it. Thank you and see you next week on the live stream. Bye bye.